Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to uh, Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fosco, here for a special edition of the show. I think I was going to say welcome to a special edition of the Elite Wine TV show. Uh, anyway, this is the Christmas special. <laughs> so yeah, the, the um, whatchamacallit, the tree actually means something now. Uh, and just a nice little background, pretty background stuff for it. Um, so anyway, so as, as I usually do for our special shows, I'm going to feature three wines. Now, first of all, um, one of the wines, the first wine we're going to do today is uh, a wine that was sent to me by the Biltmore Estate. Now, a little backstory with that is that um, they had sent me these, they sent me two wines, which we'll be doing one wine for Christmas and one for New Year's. And um, the plan was to do a Skype interview with them and uh, talk about the wines. Unfortunately, uh, being the holidays in December, it's kind of difficult to, for everyone's schedules to mesh. So I went ahead and we're going to go ahead and do the wines uh, as a regular review. Uh, and then we're going to try to meet up sometime early next year to do some other wines with them. Uh, also a little history, I have done some Biltmore wines in the past uh, with Ceci Barreto. And um, I believe they were on video too. <laughs> yeah, they were on video uh, about a year ago. So uh, we did about three different episodes. So um, let's uh, get right into it first of all. Now I did chill this a little bit. It's not super chilled, but this is the Biltmore uh, 2012 Christmas wine. Um, now, one other thing that I'm doing here is, uh, and I meant to bring up the website for this gentleman, so uh, while I'm getting the email brought up, uh, I also was contacted by somebody concerning a new corkscrew uh, and uh, wine aerator. So as you can see, I haven't opened any of the wines yet. Um, really just because I want to make sure that the wines haven't had any time to breathe at all um, so that we can see the effect of the wine aerator. Now you don't typically aerate uh, white wines, but um, you can. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I mean, you, white wines should breathe a little bit, right? You know, they, they benefit from interaction with the air. Um, it's just that uh, we typically don't seem to, uh, we don't seem to have a lot of, um, you know, People don't seem to aerate their wines. They don't seem to think to breathe, but they should do that. Okay, so this is the first time I've been using this thing. So first, let's talk about this, and then we'll talk about the Biltmore and the other wines. Um, so Bill Ward, uh, or I'm sorry, William, you know, Bill Ward, um, or William Ward, uh, he's out of Ohio. He's an engineer, and he decided he wanted to create a wine opener that was better than everything else out there. So he's created something that's kind of like, you know, the, the wing thing. Um, but this is something where you, you put it over the wine and after you pull the cork out, you're going to end up pouring the wine into here and it aerates it. And it's the, uh, the little where the worm is, that's what's aerating the wine. So um, I told him I would check it out. Um, he has a, um, whatchamacallit, a, a Kickstarter going on this. And I will have a link below for it. And this is called the Air Vines. And so this is, uh, this is how it works. Now, in the video, you turn the bottle. This is, you know, really kind of meant, for, I guess, for like a home use. Um, but you turn the bottle, and you can see I have the thumb here on this so that the corkscrew stays in place. And you turn the bottle, and the cork's starting to come out right now. So that's kind of neat. Okay. So one thing you're not going to have to worry about is a cork breaking on you. So that's kind of cool. Now I don't know, it probably is easier to do it like this. Okay, so I've got the cork and I let it go a little bit too far in there. So I might have gotten a couple, I might have gotten a little bit of a cork in there. So now take the cork out, or I guess take this out. 
Now I'm gonna do something real quick here. We're gonna, we're gonna review, the, first we're gonna review the wine, pour it straight into the glass, and then we'll, um, and then we'll aerate the wine through the aerator. And I probably should have had a, um, a second glass, but I didn't. So, all right, so real quick about the Biltmore, so it doesn't, you know, whoops. So do that. All right, so uh, this particular wine is uh, made for that, or they make it, and, um, Oh, and also it's going to come in this little thing here. He also has an aluminum version that I think is going to be a different price. Um, but he's going to have the acrylic, and he's got a whole bunch of details about it. It's it's safe. It uses uh, it's uh, it's not going to hurt you. It's not hurt, harmful to the environment and all. Oh, here it is. Uh, harmful to the environment, all that. Um, and I believe it was around fifteen dollars. They expect to be about fifteen dollars retail. So anyway. Um, it, when, between this segment and the next segment, I'll make sure I get all the information again because I didn't do it. And I'm not going to do a double take since I've op opened the wine. Um, so anyway, so for the Biltmore. Now, one thing about the website is um, I can't find the actual wine on the website, but on the website they do have a contest for next year's Christmas wine uh, for the label. So I'm guessing that the labels are created by other people. Um, I don't know if this has the artist's name on it, but it's... Basically, it's the Biltmore Estate, and the Biltmore's in North Carolina. Uh, they've been around for a long time, and uh, uh, as in, you know, Vanderbilt, if you don't know who the Biltmore Estate's named after. But let me read the spec sheets real quick. Uh, Biltmore House is an enchanted treasure of Western North Carolina that glows with festive holiday warmth. Uh, artist Marcus, here we go, Marcus C. Thomas of Weaverville, North Carolina, was a winner of the label contest for 2012. And uh, this is a... Um, Vintage is 2011, which we hope so because it'd be kind of hard for them to have get me, gotten me the wine. I mean, they could have, but it would not have been probably very good. Um, and here's the grapes they used. Uh, Gewürztraminer, Demeter, Muscat Canelli, Chenin Blanc, Riesling, and Muscat Orange. Uh, they are out of California as far as the grapes, so it is um, uh, a California um, appellation. Uh, it was bottled on the 27th of August, 2012. Um, blah, 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 blah. If you want to get into the really geeky stuff, its pH is 3.18, uh, its total acidity is 0.64, residual sugar is 2.3%, and the alcohol is 12.5%. Um, so here's what they, they, they ferment the juices in stainless steel tanks at a low temperature until it's complete. After they ferment, the wine is adjusted to proper sugar level, blended and bottled. Um, and it's suggested retail is $12.99. Okay, so um, so it's a definitely a value price wine, and since this is a Christmas type of thing, a white wine, you got the Gewürztraminer, you got the Riesling, uh, you got the Muscat, so you've got a lot of great little white you know white grapes in there to that should be good for pairing. So let's let's go straight to the wine itself and check it out, and I will um, I will aerate the the third wine. So I want to do the the two the two wines first just to see if I get a difference in the aeration. Um, I, I do like this. Um, it's kind of cool, you know? Yeah. Uh, one thing you do have to make sure you do, you don't have to have one of these, but you will need a foil cutter because I would suggest you don't put the thing in there with the foil and pull the foil up, so. Which is nothing because, you know, you got all, you know, the little rabbit ones, you have foil cutters with them, so it's not like having a foil cutter is weird. It's, you know, it's just how you open the bottle. All right, so it was already aromatic coming out of the bottle. So I get, um, I know it says muscat orange, but I, I kind of felt like I got an orange uh, aroma out of it, more like an orange peel. You do get that citrus type of thing, so you get the lemon and the lime. But I do get... I do get, uh, besides that citrus flavor, I get kind of a more tropical fruit flavor. Um, but I, I really kind of get that fleshy, not fleshy, but that orange type of thing, maybe almost nectarine type. But really kind of like the, you know, the flesh of the orange. Floral, it might be there, but I'll just go generic white flowers. It's nothing really prominent. I'm still getting used to, with the lighting setup, where to look instead of looking at the the LCD display, looking actually at the camera. And it is noticeable when you look in my eyes. So it's kind of like, you know, watching people read a teleprompter. Um, 
you know, when like now the now the newscast is right in the little like where the camera's shooting, it's right there. So they don't have like, you know, with the cue cards and teleprompters where they actually have to Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I'm not that sophisticated yet. PBS, you want to do a show? Anyway, um, great aroma though. Nice combination of, of uh, fruit fl uh, fruit aromas. No apparent wood, which it shouldn't be. It's just fermented in stainless steel. And it doesn't appear to be aged in oak either. Okay, that was nothing. It's got some great flavors to it. Um, it's got that residual sugar, not, not a whole lot of residual sugar, but it's got a tad bit of sweetness, but that's really more from the, just from the fruit forward nature of the wine. Um, I still get more, rather than the lemon lime part, I get kind of that orange nectarine, um, almost pineapple aspect to it. And then on the back end, as I'm breathing out, it, it's, there is a bit of a kind of pasta part coming through as I breathe out through my nose, which you know helps with the with the aromas and all that. But there is a bit of like rubber, okay, which is not on which is not bad and not unusual, but it's it, it kind of, it kind of took me by surprise. Mm. It's a great tasty wine. Um, definitely good for like your aperitif, you know, to get to get the juices flowing. Acidity is pretty low. Um, it's not very high in acid, um, but uh, it's great to be, you know, to start off your Christmas dinner. You know, you're going to have maybe your appetizers. You're going to have maybe. Maybe you're going to pair it with some type of, of seafood type of appetizer, but maybe you're going to pair it with just like a, a cheese tray, veggie and treat, a, a crudite um, platter, um, a crudite, crudite <laughs> platter. Um, and then you're going to get, uh, and then you can even do a little bit of, it's not, you don't traditionally think of white wines and meat, but maybe you're doing something like a lighter ham, like a prosciutto or something like that, um, or just, Something along those lines is lighter, nothing heavy, um, along with some fruit and, of course, your veggies and cheeses. Um, but it's something that that will definitely get you uh, um, get you started uh, with your meal. Um, breathing out, I still get a lot of that. Um, it, it's kind of strange, a lot of that rubber type of aroma to it. So um, a little bit different, not not. Uh, nothing I expected. So now let's let's try it with the aerator. Now again, okay. So now this, in general, just like any of the other aerators that are out there, it's supposed to make the wine be as if I had let it decant or st stayed in the glass for. A much longer time. I won't estimate how many minutes, but already, I mean, there's a, there's, you can see there's carbonation in, I don't know if you can see it, but there's carbonation in, uh, or bubbles in here. So let's check it out, see if there's any difference. Now on the nose, I'm going to say that it's actually a little more muted. Now that could also be because it's been aerated. So um, it's not going it, to, it maybe is, it may expose to a lot of the air, so maybe the, maybe the aromas, the bouquet, won't be as prominent, it's more subtle. Okay, the one thing I really wanted to see what would happen. With the aeration, that rubber back end is gone. 
which is good. Um, not that it was extremely unpleasant, it was just kind of like, okay, it was like the one negative I would find with the wine. So, but it, everything's like more subtle. It's not as in your face. Uh, the acid comes through a little bit more with the aeration. Um, so it obviously has changed the wine, which is what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to help, you know, help it develop a little bit faster instead of having to wait an hour or 30 minutes or even 15 minutes in a decanter. Um, it smoothed the wine. Even though the acid is a little bit more, it smoothed out the wine a little bit. It's, it's made it more balanced. And now there's some other flavors involved. I wouldn't say vanilla, but there's like a like a cookie aspect to it. Something something that's a little bit different. Like maybe it was that pasta that kind of turned into more of a baked goods uh, thing. But yeah, get a little bit of that rubber again. But it's not as not as prominent. It's definitely changed the wine as it's supposed to. Um, I like the wine. I recommend the wine. Um, I've been kind of toying with the idea of not doing any more scoring of wines. Um, but at the same time, it, I, think, I think people want to know what I think about the wine. So uh, we're going to try a little experiment for this in the next episode with uh, the champagnes. Is we're not going to score these wines, but I will tell you whether it's a, a recommend, a maybe, or don't even bother. So recommend, highly, or maybe even highly recommend. What I would highly recommend this is $13 uh, suggested retail. You might be able to find it for a little bit less. Um, like I say, it doesn't look like you can order it uh, on the website, though we are getting very, very, very close to Christmas. So even if you did order on the website, you wouldn't really necessarily get it in time for Christmas dinner. But if you're in North Carolina or near there, and you want to stop by over the weekend or stop by on Christmas Eve because hopefully this is this video is up by Saturday morning or Friday night. Uh, so this is Thursday night recording it. Um, you know, stop by. I'm sure they've got some at the winery at, at least. But uh, you might be able to call them and order it. But, you know, I definitely would check it out. Absolutely. All right, so let's... Let's quickly get into the Riesling here. Oh, just put this back here. All right, since I've got it out and it's already here and blah, blah, blah. Now, that is the one thing I guess doing reviews. Um, is having the residual wine in here. So maybe that's not such a great idea. Well, first of all, well, no, I guess it's going in there. Okay, so this is a Riesling. Now, this is the uh, Johann Joseph Prum. Okay, this. There we go. There we go. Okay, not looking good on this. I don't see the cork coming up. I see the cork getting destroyed. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go out, we're gonna go back to old school real quick. So the first one I did great on, the second one not so much. The third one is a screw cap, so the corkscrew part is not gonna really be very good here. So we're gonna go traditional real quick I think, they went, I think it went too far again down that down it but yeah kind of the court kind of got destroyed in this now that also could be a function of the fact that it was still wet okay so that might be something to think about I don't have any more wines to really aerate other than these two. I'm not going to aerate the champagnes and the sparkling wines, but I did destroy the cork on this one. All right, so 
Oh, yeah. We were supposed to go in between, so hopefully I put the curtains together. <laughs> Normally I create discrete files for the one, but I guess I'm just running so far behind, I'm trying to get caught up here. All right, so um, here's what I'm gonna do while I'm, while I'm talking, getting this information up. All right, so this is like an icon of Rieslings for Germany. Uh, this is the Johann Joseph Prune Riesling. It's the 2010 uh, Wellness Sonnenhe Spätlese. Okay. Um, no, that's not what I was trying to go to. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it was... Bringing up Chrome. There we go. Okay, so... Um, Anyway, I'm trying to see if it has the price on here real quick. Okay, so this will retail for $44. I don't know why I thought $14. I it mixes the four. $44. Okay. So anyway, um, so this is the um, it's a German Riesling the Mosul area of Germany. Uh, and Riesling is just kind of one of those classic holiday wines uh, for Thanksgiving and or Christmas dinner. Um, I didn't go Riesling for Thanksgiving, but I figured I'd go with it for um, the uh, Christmas special. Now, I bought this at Joe Saglin Benny's, which is one of the um, better wine shops here in San Antonio. And uh, they were having discounts on all the wines they were doing. So I saved a decent amount of money uh, off the retail on these things. So this particular wine retails for $47.99. Uh, I did get it for $35.99, so um, nice little discount. And I have pictures of the label. Um, the family behind this has been around for quite a while in, uh, uh, in making wine. Um, this particular vineyard that it's coming from is considered one of the top uh, vineyards or Rieslings uh, vineyards for Rieslings and uh, they started off well this particular estate started off in 1911 even though the family's been around uh, or the maintaining vines since the 17th century um, so I'm real excited to try this uh, this was a highly recommended Riesling uh, by the gentleman over at Joe's so I'm very excited to try this um, and hopefully I'll find this will be one of those Rieslings I'll, I'll have the epiphany with because I'm still trying to find that Riesling that I really, really, really like. Although, otherwise, most Rieslings seem to be kind of like, yeah, they're good. Uh, and, and for $35, it probably is going to be really good. Um, so the, the vineyard name stand, uh, means sundial in German. Just a little, little quick thing. This nice golden color here. Now the aromas, man, it's got, it's pretty complex. Now I'm getting, uh, really getting a very tropical fruit on it. Um, it, it really feels kind of almost mango, pineapple type of fruits. You know, I really wonder like in, in places like Germany when, when they created these wines and they're smelling these aromas and we talk about tropical fruits if, if they were you know what they were smelling out of it you know things that were not native to Europe um, I mean granted in the 17th 18th century it's not like these types of fruits were going to be completely unavailable but it's not like you're going to go down to your local grocery store and have rows and rows of tropical fruit everywhere um, just kind of wondering what they were smelling what they were equating it to A tad bit of uh, lime, or lemon, actually more lemon than lime. Maybe a hint of floral, again, white flowers. But a beautiful nose, I really, really like this nose. It's got a great fruit forward um, flavor to it. Um, 
It's got decent, not huge acidity, but it's got a good medium acidity, almost medium plus, meaning the mouth is really, really watering. It's the residual sugar that's containing that acid. And that's one of those things where, like with white wines, acidity is really that big key thing about white wines, like tannin is for red wines. And getting that, getting that, the juice is flowing in your mouth with the acidity is very, very well, con well contained with the sugar. But this is not an overly sweet wine. Um, so you're not, it's not like you're drinking like a sweet, sweet white wine. Um, I mean, I still get that, I wouldn't say it's actually mango, but orange really flavor more than anything else with a little bit of, a little bit of salinity with maybe, or it feels like salinity with like a little bit of lime juice. Um, maybe like thinking about like a margarita. So get a bit of tartness to it, to it. Like, so like, like having some lime sour um, with it. But um, this is nice. It's really really, really good. If I was going to score it, um, it would definitely get a very, very high score for me for as far as the type of scores I hand out. This is a highly recommend. Um, and it should be. I mean, this is one of the premier uh, winemakers out there in Germany for Riesling, which most wine is Riesling in Germany, but um, it's definitely one of the big names out of the Mosul that um, if you see it on the shelf, you're probably going to get good quality out of it. All right, let's aerate this thing. Kind of wanted to do that. And let's see how it fares. Now, I want to make sure I don't have any... Yeah, I got all the little corkage stuff out of there. And I'm really sorry that the cork busted. It was probably something that I did that was wrong. Oh, what am I doing? Ha <laughs> ha! Well, you know, kind of a rinsey rinse, you know, of the aerator. So yeah, that's that was what that's what I did. Rinse the aerator out. Okay. So now let's try it with the air vines or the air vins. Not sure how he wants it pronounced. Again, you need to go to the Kickstarter site, so I'll have it up. You'll have basically a week left to 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 um, help him out with that. So again, it does change the wine a little bit. I feel like I'm getting more of the citrus rather than, you know, more of the lemon lime uh, aromas out of it. The acid's really coming through now. Um, it almost feels carbonated, which I guess technically it, it has been. Um, but the acidity really is starting to come up. I mean, you can really taste it or feel it more, more like on the tip of your tongue. And even on the sides, on the sides, I mean, it's definitely has changed the wine. So as far as like for the product, aerating the wine, it's obviously changing the wine. Um, I'm about you know, so I'm, I'm one for one for two on being successful in opening up a cork with it. Um, again, it, it could have been something where the the corkscrew was wet or the inside was wet, or it just could have been. You know, I do have to say though, when I when I got this and it's only two years old, when I took the capsule off, uh, there was a little bit of mold underneath, so there could have been something with the cork itself. Um, so that it could have been, I could have used the regular wine opener. It could have broken apart. So we're not going to blame the, um, we're not going to blame this on it, but definitely awesome wine. Highly recommend it. If you're out, if you're out, uh, if you're out and about and you can see it, you find it, get it. All right.
So let's move on to the next wine. All right, so we're back with uh, wine number three. Before we move on to wine number three, though, let's uh, quickly go through the little ad segment, right? All right, so um, I just started reading this book. Now, this was suggested to me by Gabe, uh, my, my uh, buddy Gabe, uh, out in Houston. He used to live here in San Antonio. He used to be the psalm over at Del Sonio, uh, Italian restaurant down in Pearl. Um, so I was telling him that we were going to do a Beaujolais uh, thing for our psalm study group, which unfortunately I had to skip because I had some stuff on the day job the night before that kept me really late. But um, so, I, so I picked up this book. It's by Rudolf... Uh, Chominsky and um, he so far I'm not very far into the book to be honest but um, this is some good stuff man it, it's really it's a great story um, it's not like in the it's not um, like the last book I'd read about the Italian wines it was great on an informational thing and it gives you little tidbits about some stuff but this is more like you know reading the story now this is um, uh, the book's called I'll drink to that Beaujolais and the French peasant who made the world's most pop who made it the world's most popular wine. The French peasant is Georges de Bouffe, okay? As in the guy who pretty much created um, the Beaujolais Nouveau market. And uh, but it's, it isn't just about Beaujolais Nouveau. So it's about Beaujolais and the people there. And the stories so far have been phenomenal. So I highly recommend uh, getting this book. And uh, I'll have a link down below for my Amazon uh, my Amazon link so you can purchase it. And uh, I'll get like two cents from your, your purchase, I guess. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, so let's get into wine number three. Now, this I also bought at Joe's. Screw cap. I don't have any problem with screw cap. Though my boss did say some like, you know, the first sip tastes like metal, but blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is the 2011 uh, Mayomi Pinot Noir. Uh, bought it at uh, Joe Sack and Benny's. Uh, they listed for $25.99. Uh, had a 25% discount, so I paid $19.49. Yeah, $19.49. So under under $20. Okay, so we're still, you know, I, I normally we do value value premium, but you know, I went white white red. So, but um, these are the same people that um, the the history of this. Um, the same people uh, started Camus and Mersole and Silver and Conundrum. So it's the same group of people. Um, it was uh, This particular winery is ran by uh, Joseph Wagner, so the Wagner family of uh, wineries. So uh, Bella Gloss is the uh, main winery that everything is associated with. Uh, his grandmother was one of the founders of uh, Camus. So uh, let's check it out. I've been wanting to try this a lot. So Pinot Noir is a great, a great wine to pair with lots of stuff. Um, this is a California Pinot Noir. Now this comes from Monterey County, 51%, Santa Barbara County, 23%, and Sonoma County, 26%. The grapes that come from the grapes that come from those areas or for this wine are very similar, or, or basically the same vineyards that the Bella Gloss, uh, that the Bella Gloss. Uh, uh, wines are coming from. They are the Las Alturas, Taylor Lane, and Clark and Telephone uh, vineyards, and they're, they're, in di they're in different parts of California that they get the wines from. I've been wanting to try this for a while. I've seen it on restaurant lists, seen it out there. really wanting to try this to, to check it out. So and That's what it was. I saw something through the glass. I'm like, what's that? It looked like the cork was stuck in the bottom. Couldn't be because there's no cork. So, first I get is, is cherries on the nose. I was freaking out hitting hit record. Did I hit record on my on this? I don't think I did. Hi. So now the sound just got better. <laughs> How cool is that? Anyway. See what happens? I'm out of practice doing this thing. So um, now that the sound really did get, just get better. Uh, I get some cherries. I do seem to get a little bit of wood on the nose. A 
maybe a bit of leather. It, it, to me, the nose is pretty close. So when we do this, let's see how that changes things up. Yeah, the nose is very close to me. So, and again, I just opened this wine. So this is a perfect reason to use one of these. The first thing that really comes to mind with this is really the astringency, um, the astringency on the uh, on the palate. They don't have the spec sheet for the 2011. No, go away. And the reason I'm looking at this, I just want to see if there's anything about it that is maybe it's um, is there anything in here besides Pinot Noir because it is. It's not super dark, actually. I guess it's not too dark for a Pinot Noir. It's, but it just, it just seemed to be a little bit purple. More purple than, I'm, than I'm, I've seen from other Pinots. But um, it could be 100% Pinot Noir. It's just that American Pinot Noir, especially California Pinot Noirs, are notorious for adding Syrah or something else to the grape. But really, the first thing that comes to mind was a bit of astringency, like from some wood. This is more mineral, mineral, mineral driven, earthy, earth driven, than fruit driven on on the palate. Um, I do get more of that earth type of stuff, um, not forest floor necessarily, but definitely I don't get an explosion of cherry or raspberry or anything else. They're there, but they're very, very muted. Um, this seems like it's wine I probably should be decanting. I probably should be airing out. It shouldn't necessarily be a pop and pour. Definitely something you're going to pair with food. Um, so let's let's do that real quick. I like the wine, and I definitely say it's a recommend. I mean, it's 26 bucks or you know under 20 if you can find it. But um, I'm actually excited in trying this again. Let's do a little rinsey rinse with on this first. Okay, and now. We'll pour it into here. All right. Gonna get the last bit of wine out of that. Okay, so now let's check out with the aerator. Now on the nose, it seems like it's opened up a little bit. It's not as, it doesn't seem as woody. But again, I don't really get much else out of it. Maybe a hint of some fruit, but nothing, nothing, um, nothing really dramatic. Ooh, a little splashback. Um, the wine's definitely softened a little bit. Maybe there is something to these aerators. You know, I just kind of kind of poo pooed on them and never really took them seriously. But a lot of people seem to use them a lot. A lot of people seem to use them a lot. Okay, a lot of people seem to use them. Um, but definitely seems to have softened the wine a little bit. Again, I know it's not very fruit forward. It's it's more of an earthy thing. It feels more cigar box, leathery. Um, again, I don't really get those classic cherries. It's something that that I, it's it's a little bit confusing to me. That I I mean, I've had some Pinot Noirs and they don't seem to go this way. So let's take a look what the 2010 tasting notes say. Uh, velvet dark, almost purple hue. Yeah. Uh, room was a sweet cream, nope. Berries, nope. Sarsaparilla, nope. Oak spices, maybe that, yeah. First entry encases the mouth with velvety richness, almost unctuous. 
almost unctuous. Okay, so that's that. That was that. That was that little bit of bitterness, the uh, astringency that I was getting. Uh, but the acidity enlivens and weights, and the weight and pops the flavors. Wine hits full force with cola, dark dark berries, earthy notes, smoked meat. Not so much on the cola and berries. I don't know about the smoked meat. I'll go with kind of that meaty, a little bit of meatiness to it. Definitely the earthiness to it. The berries, I don't really get that. The cola, I don't really get that. Again, it could mean that it just means it really needs to aerate. It really needs to be in decanter for an hour, 30 minutes. Um, it's not a bad wine, but it's not a wine that's like flooring me. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is awesome wine. Um, it's a recommend, but um, uh, I wouldn't necessarily... Uh, let's see how how, the, how did he put it in the Italian book? Um, it's not to me. It's not a wine that uh, you have to you have to have before you die. That was actually I, kind of reading that. It kind of made me think about how I rate the wines. Um, definitely, if you see it on the shelf, you I would say buy it. If you're looking for a higher end Pinot Noir from California, but my recommendation is that you probably want to decant this. But um, I mean, it feels like it's it's developing more, and that's why I, that's why I say it's a recommend. But um, it hasn't floored me. Like I was, I was kind of had a little more high expectations of it, but that's okay. It's still a good wine. All right, so um, that's gonna wrap it up for the Christmas special. I think I kept it under an hour. Um, as always, stop by the website, click the links above to friend me up. Click the links below about all these wines. Click the link about this. Definitely, you know, give the guys some ducats. Um, uh, depending on the type of uh, donation level you do, uh, let's see. You got uh, pledge thirty-three or more. Um, you'll get the early bird special on the first hundred or er orders, um, and then you'll see one Aerovine corkscrew and wine aerator with free engraving, and for a discount of thirty percent off the retail pro retail price. Um, if you do thirty-six dollars or more, you'll get um, you'll get the engraving for discount twenty-five percent. I'm not sure what the difference was on that. Oh, early bird special on 100, first hundred orders. Thirty-six or more, you'll get twenty-five percent discount on the retail plus thirty-seven. You'll get the aluminum version, um, and then you'll get a thirty percent discount in an engraving. Uh, Forty bucks or more, you'll get it uh, in February. And uh, it'll be, it doesn't say which one it is. It doesn't say if it's the aluminum or the acrylic, probably the acrylic, 17% uh, off. And then 40 or more, you'll get the aluminum version, 25% um, more retail price discount, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, check it out. I mean, it's, it's a great idea. You know, combines a corkscrew with the aerator. Um, you know, uh, it's, you know, half a dozen you know, if, if you if you like, if you're comfortable with these types of corkscrews and you want to get an aerator and you want to, you know, blah, blah, blah. But if you want something that's just like all in one and you're not, you know, you're not worried about, uh, you know, twisting the bottle. That's the only thing I would say, like, you're not going to use this for, um, you're not going to use this product at all for something that's really old because you have sediment. Uh, you don't want to, you don't want to disturb the bottle. So this is definitely for pop and pour bottles, things that are not overly old. Uh, like my bottles, <laughs> I don't have anything really old. Um, if you're doing sediment, you're, do, you're doing something completely different. You're decanting it, not just to aerate it, but you're decanting it to get the sediment out. But, um, you know, for pop and pour, uh, I think it's a great idea. Never seen anything else like it on the market. Um, and of course, the book. Uh, stop by, check things out, leave some comments below. Um, check out the Check out the written blog about what I plan to do next year, and uh, we'll see everyone again next time for New Year's Eve. <laughs>